Welcome back to my channel and another episode of Homebrew Mythic Climb. It's day four. I'm Ricky. Let's dive right in. And as usual, here's the reminder. I am piloting my friend's homebrew deck. He made it all the way to Mythic with it uh, last season, and I'm trying to do the same right now this season. So our first opponent, Jack TMS. Our first uh, hand here looks pretty good. We have three early creatures we can play. Um, we have two Skylands, which is a little bit unfortunate um, because we won't be able to get life, uh, Selfless Savior on the first turn. But other than that, I think it's reasonable. So I talked to uh, my friend about mulligans. He didn't really have a preference in um, early creatures hmm, Lurus, 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 Lurus. I think I can afford to have a Lurus up here. Um, uh, he didn't really have a, a particular concern of having too little or too many early creatures in the hand. Um, what he was concerned about was um, having snapdacks in the opening hand. He said that he almost always mulligan snap decks in the opening hand because it's just uh, based on his experience, it was not a card that he wanted at all to begin with. So interesting, interesting advice. We'll see how it works out. Our opponent starts off with the ever annoying uh, glass casket, so that is a little bit unfortunate. We see a swamp, we like the swamp, we'll play the Luminarch Aspirant here. Jack TMS. What can TMS stand for? Uh, ooh, Maul the Skyclaves. Uh oh. Do we have ourselves a mirror match race here? So, what I can do here is um, get the Luminarch Aspirant out. Um, we will leave it be in case we need to heartless act uh, his flying knight. We will spread the love around and then I will attack for three. I will end my turn. Let's see what he does. He attacks for four. Uh, let's try and kill it. Let's see what he has. Shepherd of the Flock, he returns his creature to his hand, he casts Sky Clave Apparition to get rid of my Luminarch. That is fine with me. Oh, it looks like we're drawing too many lands yet again. Um, we do have Allurus. We do have the Selfless Savior. And I believe I will put a woman counter on Lurus and attack with the Luminarch. He is fine with trading. I will sacrifice my dog. I get a 2 2 token. And I will play my white mana and get myself to savior right back. And I will end my turn. I, since he is running some sort of white weenie deck, I'm not expecting a board wipe, so I think we're looking pretty good here today. Venerable, venerable Knight, okay, yep, looking pretty good. Um, my turn. Unfortunately, it is just a Plains. Um, 48.6 I think is pretty reasonable. Here we will um, make our Luminarch Aspirant larger. And then here we can attack with all of our creatures. Let's see what happens. He blocks with the dog. Um, he blocks the dog, I mean. I'm fine. I'm fine with trading that. 
I can get a break back. He does have a kill spell. And I will end my turn. My opponent casts a Shepherd of the Flock. A 3-1 blocker, not too scary, but he will also have the Giant Killer. Seasoned Hallowed Blade as well. Hmm. Alright, alright. Let's hope I don't draw a land. And I draw a land. 47-7, I think that's reasonable. 47-7, well, let me record that anyway. Um, here, I think... We are going to have to go with Luminarch Aspirant goes on top and we will attack with our three creatures. I think that's the right attack. So the thinking is, if they spread out to block, um, I'll sacrifice anyway. If they don't, I will just uh, trade for their creatures. If he activates the invulnerable, uh, that's okay. I don't need to do too much about that. It does get rid of one of his cards. Luminarch Aspirant hits the board. He's looking to equip his Skyclaves for sure. He attacks for four. Blood Chief's Thirst is excellent to draw here. Um, I think I'll definitely need to kill his uh, Aspirant. I can't let him outgrow my creature. He in a five, uh, make it a 5-5, five, five, and I'll attack for 5. My opponent is forced to block with his 1-2, or else he dies. So here we are. He does have a Maul of the Skyclaves, he does have a Season Hallow Blade. So he attacks for 4. And he's probably looking for um, to create a token. Unfortunately, I draw yet another land. 45, 8. 45, 8, I think, is actually pretty reasonable. Uh, I will have to attack, I believe, or else next turn he'll just equip them all the Skyclaves anyway. Ooh, this is risky. Um, I think I'm forced to attack here. I have, to, I have to make sure he doesn't get enough uh, blockers next turn because he'll just go wide, attach the Skyclaves, and I will lose if I let him build up blockers. My opponent casts Giant Killer, unfortunately. He draws the perfect card, and now I am looking pretty bad. Another Blood Chief's Thirst isn't really going to do it, so unfortunately I think this is the end of the road for me. He's just going to discard his card to give it indestructible. Yep. And then... That's it. We lose the first round. Mulligan. Did not mulligan. We lost this. Not a free game. Gold to... Zero pips. On to the next one. So, for those of you who are interested in following uh, the deck performance, uh, my untapped.gg is linked below. I also have a Google Sheets spreadsheet linked below. It ha uh, I track extra stats on it, um, for example, how many times I mulligan, how many times I get mana screwed, etc, etc. Let's see... 
Hushbringer Lurus. We see Snapdax and Baneslayer Angel in the opening hand, which is something my friend has warned us again. But let's see how it plays out. I am going first, and I like going first with the full hand of cards. Temple of Silence into Temple of Silence. I think that's okay. I'll keep it. I am looking to get to five lands pretty quick. Uh, I do need a second land here to play Hushbringer. Hopefully it doesn't get stomped by a Bone Crusher Giant. Very likely if he drops a red mana. He does not. He plays Edgewall Innkeeper instead which is a high value card for that particular deck. So I do need 3 mana right now, so I will drop my planes, I will play my Lurus, and I will attack with Hushbringer. My opponent casts Lovestruck Beast and gets value out of Edgewall Innkeeper, drawing the card. Great card, Edgewall Innkeeper. A little bit uh, overpowered in my opinion. So I don't need uh, any mana open this turn, so I will take the Scry from my Temple of Silence. It's a land, so I will turn that to the bottom. Um, and I will attack with my Hushbringer. The Hushbringer doesn't stop Edgewell Innkeeper's trigger because the Edgewell Innkeeper trigger is when you cast the spell, not when it enters the battlefield. So uh, nothing Hushbringer can uh, silence. If you're wondering what the uh, deck list is, the deck list that I'm playing, please check out the card. It should be uh, up in the corner. I made a video showcasing it. So my opponent plays Skyclave Apparition and its ETB effect gets stomped, which is excellent. Maul the Skyclaves is an interesting uh, option here. Let me get my Baneslayer Angel out first. I will attack with my Hushbringer. So far, so good. My opponent can still have a lot of uh, ridiculous cards in the green-white colors. I'm hoping to avoid um, Glass Casket on my Lurus. I, I'm hoping he doesn't draw Primal Might to smash my Bane Slayer Angel out of the sky. He does get he does bottom his Scry, so that is a little bit of good news for me. Come on! <sighs> My opponent has roped once and still doing nothing. Alright, he passes the turn. Very interesting. Uh, I will drop another land. I have, let's see, 6 mana. 48 6 I think is pretty normal. If he has a kill spell, I am a little bit worried about it, so I will attempt to cast Maul the Skyclaves onto my Lurus, and then attack for everything really, and see what happens. My opponent has no response. Um, I'm tempted to cast my second Hushbringer, I'm not anticipating a board wipe because my opponent is playing a creature heavy deck, so Shatter the Sky would be pretty silly for him to play. So let's see how he responds to my Air Force. I 
I just finished watching uh, Rick and Morty season four today. It came out on HBO Max. It was most excellent. Most excellent. That show never disappoints. And my opponent concedes. Hooray! One win. We didn't mulligan. We... Oh, I'll do that later. We did win. It wasn't the free game. And this was gold 2 at 2 pips. On to game 3. Whoa, that was a quick ready. I like it, I like it. Ganford. Ganford. The way they capitalize the N here, I almost read that as Nanford. You know how like Nan, when you enter a weird value for uh, some fields? Um, Alright, two early creatures, four lands, not ideal, but we do have a support spell and we're going first, so I guess we will have to keep that. Play a planes, call it a day, and we'll... It's a Lurus, so I believe the creature I care more about is probably um, no priest for the offense, and of course I draw another land. Uh, so I will lead with the no priest. I would rather uh, have Hushbringer survive to stomp out um, any Demir rogue action. So let's see how this plays out. And again, because we're going first, Menace will almost uh, get us some free damage. Almost certainly, unless he plays a Ruined Crab followed up by a Swamp, plus the Rogue is a possibility. Yep, unfortunately it does look like the Rogue is coming in, so all, all I'll do is uh, cast my Hushbringer and then pass the turn. My opponent casts a second Ruined Crab. I, again, this is, you've seen it on my channel, this is like the third time my opponent playing the Mirror Rogues has just opened up with double Ruined Crab out of nowhere. Play another land, play my Selfless Savior. Let's see if it gets countered. Ooh, oops, I meant to uh, cast Blood Sheep's Thirst. I guess here I will just gain some life, although he did just cast Soaring Thought Thief. So I believe I will be forced to sacrifice my dog to protect my Hushbringer, and then I will respond by killing the Thought Thief. The problem with killing the Thought Thief is that it does leave the Ruined Crabs in play, so when he plays a Fable Passage, I will almost certainly be on the highway to Millland. Uh, I draw another Selfless Savior. I was hoping for a little bit more power. But here we are. My opponent casts the exact same thing, so we are going in for the repeat. I will once again protect my Hushbringer. And my opponent ha follows up with the second Searing Thought Thief. How? Why? How? How my opponent in 13 cards gets two copies of Ruined Crab and three copies of Searing Thought Thief. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's honestly comical. And of course we are drawing more lands. Um here we are, we are stalled, we have nothing left to do. We are going to get both milled and killed at the exact same time. Even if we draw a Snapdax at the moment, I don't think that's enough to save us. We won't uh, be able to deal 16 damage faster than he can uh, play uh, Fabled Passages.
Yep, we have seven cards left, so pretty straightforward. He's gonna cast the oh he casts nothing. Um I guess I will kick, try and kick my ghastly gloom hunter. It's going to get countered. It does not get countered, but that doesn't help. Um I suppose I will have to attack with my Hushbringer. And it dies to a heartless act. I uh, cast Lurus. So we didn't mulligan here. We have lost this. Not free. Gold 2. Back in one pick. I will offer the concede. Ridiculous! But such as it is, sometimes we draw ridiculous hands as well. But as you, if you are following my series, I have run into a horrific stream of bad luck. We are now on game four. If you're interested in skipping ahead or uh, skipping backwards, I will leave timestamps for the beginning of each game in the description and uh, while you're down there like and or subscribe um, and hey if you have any comments or questions about what uh, what, what my plays are give me a timestamp drop me the question and uh, I'll see if I can uh, give you a good answer so the rune crab is here he has the lurus in his hand so um, do I want to save three cards um, probably not, so let's see what happens. Ooh, if that was my plan, if I wasn't going to cast Blood Chief's Thirst, I really should have started with the Fabled Passage first. Uh, so, two lands, I'll cast Null Priest. We need to go aggressive as soon as possible. That's a third mana for my opponent, and he casts a Thieves Guild Enforcer, and he already has the threshold. So yeah, my mistake is coming to bite me in in, uh, in the butt now. Uh, I will cast Blood Chief's Thirst onto uh, the Thieves Guild Enforcer. I don't like it. I will cast my Selfless Savior, and I will attack with the Null Priest. And turn, I will have to remember to activate my Fabled Passage. So this was another hand that uh, uh, we should have considered mulliganing. We have Snapdax in our hand. Uh, so we'll see if that was a mistake. My opponent has apparently milled like eight of my lands already. Activate my Fable Passage so I don't forget. I will be looking for white mana because I need double white to cast snap decks. Um, nothing exciting so I will cast Maul of the Skyclaves onto my uh, Null Priest. I would rather have the offense on Null Priest, and I can gain life as well, in case I draw into Speaker of the Heavens. I could have attached it to my Selfless uh, uh, Savior and offered him the block, uh, and if I swung in with both, I would have scored one extra damage, but doing it this way, I can save, I can try and save my Null Priest by sacrificing the Selfless Savior, which is what happened just now. I now have four lands, which sets us up nicely to cast both Null Priest and Hushbringer. 
Um, I believe I should cast Hushbringer first. In case uh, they try to block with uh, something nasty. But of course he has two kill spells because that's just how these decks go. Okay, so my f opponent gains control of my Hushbringer for some reason. I'm not sure what that is about. Uh, I am short mana. I will equip all the Skyclaves onto my Null Priest and swing for four. My opponent casts into the story, refills his hand, he probably has at least one kill spell or one counter spell now. Yep, of course. I finally draw the land that I'm looking for, I will cast my Baneslayer Angel, it will almost up instantly get killed as well. If it instantly gets killed, I will be in a bit of trouble. Ruin Crab. I have 25 cards left in my library. 19 now. Lurus hits the board. My opponent casts Thief's Guild Enforcer. And my opponent empties his hand by playing Cling to Dust. So he gets to draw a card. Hopefully it's not a kill spell. If it is, it's okay because he doesn't have black mana. So I draw another planes. I can uh, cast Snapdax. Hmm. This is tricky because if that's a if, if that is a counter spell, I am extremely extremely vulnerable here. So I believe I need to cast Snapdax and try and kill one of his uh, flyer creatures here. Uh, that's very risky though. So, oh well. Sometimes you gotta go big. The safer play will be to kill um, the Lurus. So actually, maybe I'll do that. And then I will attack. He will be forced to block. And I end my turn. So actually, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I really should have just killed his Hushbringer and his Merfolk Wind Robber and went for the win. I think I was... I'm far enough behind that that was a risk. So um, I think that was a misplay on my part. Yikes. I draw Heartless Act, which does not help, unfortunately. Um, I suppose I will have to kill his uh, crabs. And I suppose I will also kill the Hushbringer.
Yep, my opponent is calling good game. Again, I don't like it when they prematurely call good game. He has a second Ruin Crab, a third Ruin Crab, a Thief's Guild, that's two, that's four more lands and he just needs to play a land and I will lose. So that is the good game. Ooh, big misplay here. Misplay! Uh, didn't mulligan. We lost this one. It's not a free game. We are back to gold too. At zero pips. That was winnable. I did make a mistake. Uh, I think I was playing, I was definitely playing too conservative. Um, he only had two blue mana left, so the chances of him having a kill spell was extremely low. Um, the only thing he could have countered with was um, uh, the Jirari, the Jirari counter spell that you know forces your opponent to counter target spell unless you play one, and it also flips into an island. Opponent goes first, we have some early plays, sure. A, B, Z, and Absen Advantage. Okay, we'll have to drop that as a white mana source, cast our selfless savior. Selfless savior gets cast. And another selfless savior. Um, I'd essentially be trading selfless savior for selfless savior. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. Yep, I'm, tra I'm essentially trading selfless savior for selfless savior. I draw a planes, I will cast. Uh, I, I think I'll have to be mana efficient and cast Luminarch Aspirant first. Actually, now that I think about it, I think uh, trading my Selfless Savior was also a mistake. If I kept it alive, my Luminarch Aspirant will probably look a lot better, uh, and then I could also start putting Maul of the Skyclaves onto Luminarch Aspirant. Uh, although, if I had Selfless Savior, it wouldn't save me from the Skyclave Apparition, so... Uh, I guess maybe it is what it is. A third land, no white source, uh, so we are stuck with pretty much nothing. We will play Speaker of the Heavens here. I can't even get my Selfless Savior out. Yeah. 53, I think that's still pretty reasonable. Opponent attacks with everything. I am fine with taking that. Not much I can do. Eidolon. Very curious. Venerable Knight. Oh, he's running a white weenie deck. Very, very curious. If I wasn't mana screwed, I would be in pretty, pretty decent form. But here we are getting mana screwed again. Uh, but we can do some fun plays where I just double equip S Speaker of the Heavens and uh, see what happens. So I'm still thinking about whether or not uh, the selfless savior trade at the beginning was worth it. Um, I, I think honestly I would feel a little bit safer if I had uh, had it in place still. 
but uh, you know, I suppose it might be an example of it is what it is here. Yeah, so if I had a dog here, I would feel a lot safer uh, doing random blocks like that. So I draw yet another no land, 48.3. Uh, Mall of the Skyclaves. I will attach Mall of the Skyclaves onto Speaker of Heaven. Yes. I will attack for 5 and heal for 5. As long as my opponent doesn't draw a removal spell, I think I should be okay. If he draws another Skyclave Apparition, I will be extremely, extremely sad. Because all I, I will have left is a Selfless Savior and some malls that I can't attach it to. He puts a woman counter on all of his creatures, but I don't think that's relevant. He can't attack through my Speaker of the Heaven. He tries to anyway, uh, not sure what the deal is. Um, with that, so I will block his Skyclave Apparition, obviously. He will be forced to sacrifice his Alsaid to protect it. So that way I prevent technically 5 damage being done to me. I won't gain any life because it, uh, protection from white pre uh, prevents damage. So now I'm at 47.3. Uh, I will play a Selfless Savior for protection, and I will attack. Oof, Speaker of the Heavens, really, uh, really going big for us here. My opponent is now stalled on the board. Ooh, we see a Lurus. Um, we are now at 46-3. Pretty sure that is uh, some sort of ridiculous mana screw as well. My opponent casts Skyclave Apparition, of course, which, as we were saying, does uh, exile that creature from the board. I won't be able to bring it back with Lurus. My opponent offers the Venerable Knight. Um, I don't think I need to block it just yet. My turn. It is still not a land. Uh, so that's 45-3 now. No Priest of Oblivion uh, can enter the battle. As well as Selfless Savior. Um, I believe I will attack with my Lurus now. <clears throat> and essentially if he blocks, I'll be trading my Selfless Savior for one of, one of his creatures. And uh, my opponent concedes. As Abzan advantage. So we didn't mulligan. We definitely got mana screwed here. No doubt about that. We won. Gold 2 at 2 pips. That was our second win. Let's see if we can build, pull 2 more. If we can pull 2 more wins in a row, that will put us on a 3 game winning streak. And that means I will play until we lose after that. So, uh, 2 creatures, um, not the best land base. Uh, but serviceable, so let's go. We'll start with the Temple of Science for the Scry. Um, the Savior isn't exactly what we want to see, but it is a useful card to have, so I suppose we will be a little bit mana screwed to um, get that going. 
Rhodesian Space Program. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm from Rhode Island. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, play that. I don't know what his deck is about, but I think I will choose to go aggressive in case I do need the Hushbringer uh, to survive. I think another option would have been to uh, play the Selfless Savior first. So my opponent casts Glass Casket, which is annoying. Uh, we do find a third land, which is excellent. And uh, unfortunately, it is not a Swamp though, so I will cast uh, Selfless Savior and um, call it... Um, he does have the Lurus, so that's kind of pointless to kill it for now, so let's just leave it. He attacks for one, I will have to take it. I don't want any trades right now with my hand looking like this. Seasoned Hallowed Blade. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And Sentinel's eyes on it. All right. Uh, okay. Fabled Passage. We'll get. We'll get a um, a planes. We'll cast the Speaker of Heavens, as well as the um, Hushbringer or Mall of the Skyclaves. I'll play the Hushbringer first. I'll give him the option if he ha if he has uh, another glass casket, um, so that I can cast all the Skyclaves next turn. And Bloodchief's Thirst is looking like a very useless card now, so uh, I might as well spend the mana to try and kill it. He will probably just uh, sacrifice his dog for it. I think this is a really random play. I'm not sure if I should be making it um, because. Honestly, it might come in handy if he does some bad trades later, so maybe I, sh I, I should have held on to that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if that comes back to bite me. Casting the Blood Chief's Thirst on his uh, Seasoned Hallowed Blade. My opponent uh, gets the Lurus. He's attacking for 4 and has Vigilance. Um, I guess I would could sacrifice my dog, but there's no point, so I won't block this. I'll allow it. My turn. I draw another planes. I will play Maul of the Skyclaves. Onto Speaker of the Heaven. And then I will attack with both my flyers. Pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing, nothing exciting here. I'm hoping my opponent doesn't draw uh, any more glass caskets, and I'm hopefully drawing no more lands. I'm at 48.5. I think that's pretty normal. No reason for me to block that. My opponent gets Lurus in play and will get his uh, savior. So not looking as good as I hope. We definitely need to draw something. Second Maul of the Skyclaves, can't complain about that. Um, I'll definitely stack it up on Speaker of the Heavens. I, I'll, I'll take the risk here because it, uh, it does have Vigilance. So I think that's worth the risk. Back to a much healthier 20 life.
My opponent casts all that glitters onto Lurus. Wow, that is a huge Lurus. And he casts Sentinel's Eyes on the Seasoned Hallowed Blade. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can block either of those creatures very well. So we'll just have to let it go. I definitely need to draw some, uh, some gas here. Ooh, I do get a Baneslayer Angel, that's kind of nice. I will attack with Speaker of the Heavens. Um, I believe I should leave Hushbringer back to block. That Lurus is becoming a problem, however, we do have 10 points of uh, first strike damage here. Not entirely sure why he's not just... Ooh. He can give it... So I, I will have to chump block the Lurus, unfortunately. I'll chump block the Lurus, I'll chump block the Seasoned Hallow Blade, or hmm, I guess I can still take the Hallow Blade damage, so let's let's go with this. opponent has a 3-3 reach creature now. I draw no no Priest of Oblivion. Unfortunately, I don't have enough mana to kick it. Don't really have anything else I can do. So yeah, saving that Blood Sheep's Thirst um, I, I don't think it made a difference if I, I killed the I, I ended up killing a dog but you know with Lurus in play if I tried to kill the Lurus you just bring it back etc etc so I don't think I gained anything or lost anything by doing that I want to start moving my malls over. I think if I move my malls over, I might be okay for next turn. Oh shoot! I forgot I already had damage on there. Uh oh. That that was almost definitely a mistake as well. But my opponent draws uh, all that glitters, and it didn't make a difference anyway. So my opponent's uh, luck of the draw overrides my stupidity. It, it, it wouldn't have mattered, so here we are. Um, pass the blockers. I guess I would block the 9-9. Nine nine. We'll block it and sacrifice it so he doesn't gain life. 
but he has more than enough damage on the board to kill me. So that is the end of that. Blues go to at one pip. Still only on two wins, we're looking for more. Soapbox is our opponent. We go first, we only have two lands. No black mana. Alright. Have to Oh, we do have black mana. What am I talking about? This can go in as white and that can go in as black. Black mana. Hushbringer. Attack for one. Hopefully, 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 we draw a land. We do not draw the land that we're hoping for, but we can cast Selfless Savior and attack. So at least we had a play. What does that do? Whenever you land, fall, exile, top card of your library, you may play that card as long as it remains exiled. Oh, okay. Uh, deals that much damage to each opponent. Okay, that's curious. That's curious. Looks like he has some sort of combo deck going. Uh, respect. Mm, do I want to go wide? I don't know what his deck is about, so I think I'm just going to play Maul the Skyclaves for some damage instead. Just in case I draw more lands and he blows something up, then I can cast Lurus and, you know, get some value instantly. He landfalls for a land, which does not help him at all. I will take one damage from that. Ooh, we do get our scry land. Is at least it's better than no land. Five lands. I don't think I need five lands. Four lands is nice. Um, this time I will yes play another Mall of the Skyclaves. My opponent does go for the landfall trick again with the evolving wilds on my turn. And unfortunately for my opponent, he draws a forest. Oh no. So spreading around some love here. Ooh, and another forest. Wow, Soapbox got really unlucky there. Uh, did not mulligan. Uh, Maybe mana screwed a little bit. Win, we won this one. Um, I think we can consider this a free game because my opponent got screwed over so so badly with his draws. Um, he literally like landfalled three times into lands uh, when his deck probably relies on not doing that. So got really lucky. Sometimes that's all you need. Just be lucky if you're not good. If I win this one, um, maybe I'll play one extra one just to see if we can get into a three game win streak. But uh, depends on, I guess, how we're feeling. We go first, we have three early creatures that all work well together. Unfortunately, we do have a tapped land. I'll start with a uh, speaker. Speaker into Luminarch is pretty good. Against Croxa, yeah, I think they would probably target the Luminarch. Ooh, perfect, actually. Uh, in fact, I think this is even better. 
I can now put the Null Priest in first. So we have even more lifelink next turn. Uh, however, if I did put the Luminarch, uh, Luminarch Aspirant and put uh, the counters on Speaker of the Heaven, I think it will even out in terms of the life gain, but I was afraid of um, something like a Bone Crusher Giant coming in, and that's exactly what happened. So this turn we don't need 3 mana, we'll play the Temple of Silence to look at a card. We do need the 5 mana for Bane Slayer Angel, so we'll keep that on top. We'll cast the Luminarch Aspirant, put a token on our Life Linker, and then swing for 3. Waho is our opponents. Or if you're Chinese, it's Waha. As in Wa, me, or I, Ha, as in good. Waha, I'm good, is what he's saying. Uh, Maul of the Skyclaves looks like a good. Uh, uh, I think I might have to spread the love here. He can't attack just yet, but. Um, hmm, this is tempting. Let's put it on the Null Priest, and we'll spread the 1-1 counters a little bit, maybe. Our opponent does mill uh, a kill spell, so that is good news for us. What is our opponent cast now? Blood Chief starts to kill our Null Priest. That is very annoying. That is also another reason why I uh, pumped um, our Luminarch Aspirant instead. Our opponent casts Kroxa. Uh, we'll probably have to discard our planes here. We do want to hope for a land and play our Bane Slayer Angel. If not, we'll just attach uh, Maul to Skyclaves and swing for more damage. We do draw the Fabled Passage. That is nice. We will look for no white mana. We will cast the Bane Slayer Angel, and then we will attach the counter to um, Luminarch Aspirant. We don't want to attack into two zombies that can double jump. Our opponent gains two life with Temerit Calls the Dead. And I believe they have enough cards now to uh, cast Kroxa if they so choose. However, I'm expecting a kill spell instead. Liliana, uh, even worse. Gloom, Ghastly Gloom Hunter. Um, so I definitely need to get rid of um, Liliana. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, I will lose this card to Kroxa, but hey, uh, I think desperate measures. I definitely need to get rid of Liliana immediately. That thing can absolutely not be allowed to live. Although if I attacked... Ooh, I think I might have made another mistake here. So the Liliana wasn't quite there for another activation just yet. Ah. Uh, so uh, again, it doesn't matter. My my opponent draws a Rankle here, so now he can just uh, force force us to discard cards and sacrifice a creature. So I'll be back to top decking mode. And we draw the Snapdax one turn too late, and I think that is the game for us because he will just cast Kroxa. Cast Kroxa. <sighs> Unfortunately, that is another loss. Oops. Oops. Forcing me to discard cards again. Bane Slayer Angel here, I think, would help. I, I believe that's the only card left that will save me in this situation. Uh, the deck has two Bane Slayers, so I'm almost definitely not going to draw it. Yep, and uh, that's the game.
，再见我好，我不好。I just said I'm not good. <laughs> Look what happened. On to the next one. So you can see I'm still making some uh, decision mistakes here. Uh, uh, fortunately, my opponent has drawn my opponents have drawn so well. My mistakes have just you know been paved right over. But uh, as we get more practice with this deck, um, we're gonna try and not make those mistakes because it will hurt us. So snap decks is gonna go to the bottom. We'll start with a swamp. Vesuvian Doppelganger. I believe that's a pretty cool card. I'll save. Uh, I think I'll have to cast a Hushbringer here. Lumeric Aspirant. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Pumps the I'll save. I will not block that. Mana. Um, I think I definitely need to kill. I suppose I could cast the Lurus first, but it's gonna grow. So no, I will. I think I will just kill the Luminarch while I still can, and I'll attack with the Hushbringer. Again, the uh, I'm not sure if that was the right play. I think it was because uh, Luminarch Aspirin can get really out of control if you don't instantly kill it. I'm going to cast Glass Casket, which sucks for me because I won't be able to lure it out of the graveyard. My opponent has a pair of Alcides. Ooh, nice. I do have two plays this turn, fortunately. Lurus and Speaker of the Heaven. Lumerak Aspirant again. Of course, my opponents again with the drawing multiple copies of everything at the beginning of of the the game. Seems like an occurring theme here. Hushbringer not going to help us. Mall the Skyclaves will help us. Um, I believe I will have to put it on Speaker of the Heavens. Don't suppose I can block that. If I block it, it'll just end up being a trade, but uh, I won't be able to attach anything next turn, so I, I will be on the losing end of that trade. Uh, Ghastly Gloom Hunter will enter, and my second Hushbringer here. I can chump block with those uh, fairly easily, so. Maybe, maybe I can make something happen, but seems very unlikely considering they have Selfless Savior and uh, Alcee in play. My opponent can create a token, which shouldn't make too much of a difference in this matchup. As usual, my opponent just literally draws way better than I do. Um, I, I don't know what to say. So 
So a play I can make here is to block both of them, and he can only save one. Um, he'll save the one that's blocking Lurus. I do nothing here. Okay, I draw a land. That's Pleasance into a Hushbringer is not what I need. Yep, definitely getting outpaced here, but I'm going to take my friend's advice and not give up until the very end. I'm not entirely sure how Snapdax uh, would even um, save me here at this point. That's 8, 11, so I suppose that's probably the best I can do. I suppose I, did I attack with Speaker of the Heavens last last uh, last turn? Don't think it uh, this makes any difference, but you know here we are. Am I supposed to be attacking with my Hushbringers as well? I mean, chump blocking doesn't seem good, but attacking here is certain death as well. So I don't, I don't know. If I forgot to attack, I should be at 11 life, but I don't think I can survive anyway. I think that's that's pretty much it. So that Hushbringer trigger was uh, uh, cancelling Daxos' ability. I do live to fight another day. An extra 3 life wouldn't make a difference to me here. But my opponent's creatures are now so massive, I don't think I... There's no card I can draw that can help me uh, turn this back. Of course it's a swamp, so that's that. Um, so I, 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 I'm definitely making some, I think, attack uh, combat decisions that are questionable, but we're getting outdrawn by our opponents so much it, I, it, it doesn't even matter.
Thassel. Thassel is our opponent. We go first. We have a whole array of creatures, so let's go. Um, I will start with the Speaker of the Heavens. I don't think... I think it should be safe because my Selfless Savior is coming down next turn. Or I could... Uh, yeah, well, I um, unless I draw... Ooh, a Cycling. Ooh, excellent. We do have another land here. So... Uh, however, I think I do want to play my Selfless Savior to be able to save my uh, Speaker of the Heavens. It looks like it's going to be a key card here. So I'll do um, that. I scry into a Temple of Silence, which I don't need, so I will bottom it. And I will attack with the Speaker of Heavens. So Cycling Deck, he's looking to just draw as many cards as possible all the way up till... Um, uh, ooh. Okay, that's not going to be a swamp, that's not going to be a swamp either. So I don't need 3 mana. I can let this come into play tapped. Um, I will have to start getting 1-1 counters on my Speaker of the Heavens. So let, let's do that. And I can't attack into it because I want to save my Selfless Savior in case he has a kill spell which uh, cycling inevitably does. So he's looking to cycle, you know, 10 or I, I think eight cards, and then he can just uh, Zenith flare me to, uh, in, into the face. Uh, he's asking for a trade, so I will have to sacrifice my Selfless Savior here to save my Luminarch. Very good value for him because that was a free token for uh, cycling a card. Mm, here, I suppose I could cast uh, two Hushbringers. Still can't really do much besides that though. Unfortunately, I can't possibly trade with uh, the Valiant Rescuer efficiently. My opponent trades his token for my Luminarch, which is unfortunate for me, and I am back to drawing a bajillion lands again. 49.5, I think that is actually a reasonable uh, uh, distribution though. Our opponent's board is getting very wide, which is concerning. If they run any Anthem cards, we could be in trouble. He gain, he has a Life Gain card, it's also uh, could spell trouble. Three copies of Go for Blood, really? Again, how are my opponents always just drawing multiple, multiple copies of key cards? Like, why? I mean, yes, you cycle the whole bunch and you're drawing, but still, look, you have three copies of the exact same card in, in, in the top third of your deck. That's just... Uh, so I suppose all I can do is attack with my Hushbringer. I could have uh, swung in with my Speaker of the he Ooh, actually, I should have swung with my Speaker of Heavens. So that was another mistake I just made. Um, if I sacrificed my dog and uh, uh, to save my Speaker of the Heavens as I attacked into him, um, I would have been able to uh, get to 27 life and activate my uh, Speaker of the Heavens. Ooh, Baneslayer Angel is pretty good. Mm, 
My opponent retrieves Lurus into his hand and he cycles. Plays a land, plays Lurus. He has access to Footfall Crater and something else. I unfortunately didn't see that. However, I do draw a snap, snap deck, so I will cheekily play this mountain. I will mutate snap decks onto hmm, suppose Hushbringer would be more efficient. I'll put it over. I will snipe the Lurus. And then I will attack with my gigantic air force now. My opponent is offering the good game, so I will give him the good game in case he does concede. Ah, my opponent draws a land, and I think that spells disaster for him. I will block one of his tokens, and he concedes. Didn't mulligan. We won this one. It wasn't free. Gold, two, at three pips. So overall, I think that's uh, our four wins for today. Unfortunately, uh, we did not advance to gold one, but sometimes that's how it is. Uh, I think today's session, uh, because I didn't really get uh, mana flooded way beyond expected uh, statistics, I'm okay with that. We had a couple of learning moments um, where you know, I, I wasn't sure if attacking or blocking was the right decision. Uh, overall, I don't think that mattered considering my opponents drew so well. Uh, it, uh, their draws just overran my mistakes anyway. Um, but hey, live and learn. So uh, check out the rest of this series um, playlist that's going to be uh, showing up anytime now. And uh, I also have pack openings on my channel. If you're on YouTube, please like and or subscribe. I'll ring it if you're feeling it. And if you're on Twitch, please follow me on Twitch. Uh, of course, I have to also say I'm just starting out. Helpful comments and suggestions will be very, very, very appreciated. Please leave them down below. And uh, have yourself a good one. See you next time.